So we're on our next uh, Calm Town Clock In. We're having fun talking to lots of amazing people around the town, hearing their lockdown stories. And we're talking to folks that uh, perhaps play a key role um, in the life of our town here in St Ives. So uh, I'm going to ask our next uh, Calm Town Clock In person to share who they are, uh, what they do and where they are right now. Oh yeah, thanks Matt. So um, my name's Aman Basuta. Um, I'm a GP and I work at the Grove Medical Practice, which used to be until very recently called Cromwell Place um, Surgery, but we've recently joined with the old exchange. So we're sort of one new name now, uh, which I'm still trying to get used to saying. Uh, mm -hmm. Cromwell Place just co keeps coming out of my mouth. So I'm sorry if I say that again in the future. Um, and um, I'm currently actually working from home. So uh, in Cambridge still, but not actually at the surgery, hence the kitchen set up. <laughs> Fantastic. Are you going to ask for an oven to be put in your, your, <laughs> your surgery well, when you get there? It's quite handy, you know, it's to get the dinner on the go. Yeah, it's um, right. But yeah, it's, I'm not sure health and safety would quite right. stretch that far. You're not going to be giving cupcakes food. out. <laughs> cupcakes to patients as they any flour. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's true. That's true. Fantastic. So, um, we know that uh, lockdown is a funny time for everybody and right now it's in the it's in the news about when will it end what's going to happen yeah. i wonder uh, before we think about some of the, the perhaps the difficulties of lockdown has there been a lockdown highlight for you well um i think i'm very lucky in that um recently i sort of moved out of a flat into our first house so i actually have a garden which has been amazing and um, i think definitely so far my sort of highlight has been i had this there's this area which is just completely chock-a-block full of weeds um you know sort of to like head height and so i've used this as an opportunity to completely dig it out by hand it's not that big of an area it's like maybe <laughs> six foot by five foot but it took a long time to, to dig it all out and then my husband and I we built um a raised bed out of random bits that we found in the garage um, and so it's not you know it's not a looker it's uh definitely a slightly shambolic but it does the trick and it holds soil in at the moment so um <laughs> And so that's that's been a real fun activity actually that we've been doing sort of over the past few weeks together um, and something that's been quite productive and you know get a bit of a sense of satisfaction a bit different to what we would normally do so that's so far been the highlight I think. Oh that's wonderful have you planted any seeds yet is there anything in have you? So so far it's empty right. but I have um, on my windowsill I won't show you because it's a bit of a mess over there but um, on my windowsill I do have a few sort of um, seedlings on the go so I've got some peas and French beans um, and a few sweet corn so that's that's my first attempt at some sort of vegetable growing um, so yeah we'll see what happens. I'm Fantastic. sure it'll all get eaten by slugs and rabbits. <laughs> Oh, don't be so pessimistic. You'll be eating those and enjoying those in a few months' time. I hope so. <laughs> Fantastic. So uh, a lot of folks are talking about routine being important at this time. So uh, do you have a routine? You don't have to have a perfect one because not everyone's perfect. Oh, yeah. No, I definitely, yeah, I think routine has been quite strong, actually. In, in, uh, and that's not what I had anticipated because I because I'm working from home at the moment. Um uh, I, I have actually found that things actually still follow a very strict routine, you know, get up, log on to work <laughs> after yeah. breakfast, work and, you know, have some lunch uh, um, and then log back on to work again and then do paperwork in the evening and have dinner. So it's, it's pretty much probably the same pattern as when I was normally at work. Um, uh, which has been quite reassuring in a lot of ways. Um, I suppose the big differences have been, I suppose, that on my days off, um, not being able to do the things, I suppose, seeing people, friends, family, but, you know, been trying to um, use that time, as I said, a bit more, doing things a bit differently, things that I haven't got around to doing before, um, and still making sure um, I suppose it's easier when you've got other people in the house that you still get up at a reasonable time and do things and make yourself be a little bit productive. So actually, routine's been quite similar. In oh, okay, that's great. Mm. So uh, lots of folks at the moment are talking about 
uh, how much we love the NHS, our doctors, our carers, and rightly so. And um, I'm sure lots of people will love to uh, say thank you to you after uh, this is all over. But what, what does your job look like as a general practitioner at the moment? Yeah, so, I mean, it, things have been so, so different to, to normal. Um, and basically what, what we've done or what we've had to do at the surgery is uh, triage everybody who uh, needs to have contact with us. So I think there's a lot of planning around basically trying to protect patients that are the most vulnerable that still need to come to the surgery, um, that are still going to need healthcare because other things are still going to be happening from um, coming to the surgery and getting infected because that's the, you know, that's the last thing we want to happen. So we've done a lot of work about trying to make sure we try and protect those vulnerable patients that do have to come to the surgery. And that means, yes, telephone triaging everybody that wants to have contact with us. So trying to do as much as we can over the telephone, video consultations, um, uh, trying to do things remotely if we at all can, and then saving the surgery space for those people that really absolutely have got lots of health problems and have to come in. Mm. Um, so we've, we've really converted to doing most things remotely and also trying to um, reduce what routine stuff we were doing, you know, the sort of routine things we were doing before. So we've got more time to deal with the urgent things because there's a lot more, obviously more acutely unwell people that need assessment. So, um, so it's been a, re a real complete change. Um, and, um, you know, I wouldn't even have thought it would be possible to work, work as a GP remotely from home, but yeah. it's amazing. So quickly we've been able to set things up. I've got a secure line um, so I can log in mm. and do all the paperwork and the letters and the lab results and, and, and most things as normal. So. Um, there's a lot that I think will be good for the future as well, actually. Ah, oh, that's great. Um, and, and, I, and I guess the message is, is if you're ill, the doctor's surgeries are still open. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. yeah absolutely. And, and I think that's something that even today, there's just this morning, um, I had a patient where I just thought, oh, you know, why didn't you call sooner? You know, we're, mm. we're still open. And, um, and yes, if it's something, you know, that's completely routine, you know, I don't know. You, you, you've got you've had something for six months and you think oh I want to get it checked out okay maybe, maybe wait for that bit <laughs> maybe wait till we're back to doing some routine stuff but certainly if people have got you know a sudden change uh, a, a, a problem they can still call the surgery um, and the receptionist we can still offer routine telephone calls and video consultations a small number of them and then we can still do urgent things as well so yeah, I really would encourage people, especially people that have got other health problems, to still call us if, if they're not sure about something. Thank you. So just moving on to think a bit more about, about lockdown. Uh, it's OK that some of us are finding it hard. Perhaps we're all having our, our wobbles or our teary moments. Have, have you had a moment where you felt, oh, goodness, this is this is tough, that teary moment? Yes, well, I think surely everybody must have had such moments, probably multiple moments, I imagine. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I think it's it's so hard for people, for all people, let alone people that have potentially already got some mental health problems of their own or something that they're struggling with. Um, I suppose me personally, um, I know we sort of briefly mentioned this before, but I'm expecting my first baby. Um, so I'm... Uh, nearly six months pregnant now and and I suppose I I definitely had a a sort of a vision I think or an expectation of what I thought things were going to be like you know sort of seeing friends and family and being able to share the experience with people um, and obviously that just has not been the case at all I, I don't think I've left my road <laughs> um, for sort of since since this since the since um the lockdown started at all so that's been a at times quite difficult and anticipating how what things might be like going forward because it's going to be quite a slow process isn't it this um change in in social distancing and, and until we can probably find a vaccine um 
so thinking about how how that's going to affect potentially later on the delivery will i be able to see friends and family so that's been quite emotionally difficult but, but and because i had this quite fixed idea i think actually of what things were going to be like and i think that probably is the same for lots of people in different circumstances that you have an idea of oh yes over this time i'm going to be doing this and this and i'm going to do this over summer or spring on and actually then these things have been completely taken out of your control and out of your um out of your remit um but i think i think it's just trying to come to terms with that and accepting that actually that that is that's life isn't it and, and it's the way of the world that things are not actually quite in the control that you think they are um and just accepting it and just knowing well you know this, this is how things are and there's nothing i can do about it um and trying to make the most of it or make the best out of a difficult situation which is sometimes more difficult than others but there's always something <laughs> i'm thinking of my veg patch there <laughs> there you go that wonderful wonderful sweet yeah. corn yeah <laughs> Thanks for sharing so honestly and um, yeah, thinking of you and all of that, it's, uh, it, it's good to hear that even doctors have their moments because sometimes we think you have it all together. Um, I'm, I'm not saying you haven't, but, you know, <laughs> they, they, we, we all have those moments. So yeah. uh, you've perhaps um, hinted about what you want to do uh, after all this is over, but um, it, it will be over. Um, we're, we're, we're doing this because uh, we want it to be over as soon as possible. But what will that, what will the first thing uh, be that you do once all of this is is done well i suppose yeah as i said i've already slightly alluded to it <laughs> definitely seeing i mean seeing friends and family um and, and i think that that's something that i'm really not going to take for granted again and i think sometimes we do sort of you know we sort of, there are lots of things that i've realized gosh i really took that for granted and i'm really going to enjoy it once this is done the other thing i was thinking about was you know going to a restaurant mm -hmm. you know oh wow you know <laughs> isn't that going to be an amazing luxury to go to a restaurant so that yeah that would be lovely seeing friends and family and going to a restaurant would be fabulous that's, <laughs> that's great so um, uh, as, as we draw our, our time to a close, it's been lovely, lovely to speak to you. I um, wonder, is there anything that you'd want to share with the town? There's a lot of people that are so grateful for what you're doing, yeah. but is there anything else that, that you would like to, to share? Yes, absolutely. Well, I was thinking about this and I think um, one of the things that's really struck me over so far, sort of, you know, talking to patients and seeing patients is um, about how, how, isolated some people feel um, and that people are struggling particularly with their mental health um, and people not just people that have got an underlying problem or something that's been niggling away but people who have never really had problems with anxiety or anything like that and, and what I would really encourage people do is not just to ignore it or think oh this is gonna go away or to actually talk to people about it if you can you know video and and telephone contact with people is really helpful perhaps even more so than texting but if, if that's all you feel able to do then texting people's fine as well um but also the if you people just search online um you know any sort of search engine for nhs coronavirus mental health the web there's a web page that's probably other people might have mentioned but it's got some really good tips about how to deal with anxious thoughts or feeling down feeling isolated and they've got a really useful list of helplines and people that you can talk to um, whether that be on the telephone um, or, or on video just to sort of work through those issues because often if you can talk about it and you can find some strategies to cope with it um, even if it's just something simple, it can make the world of difference. So I would definitely say don't just put up with it. If you're feeling that way, uh, do check out that website or, or go and have a little look and, and try and do something about it. Don't just suffer. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for your time. It's all and, right. um, give us a little look into your kitchen as well. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. So um, uh, thank you so much. And um, we hope that the next three months go well and that uh, you have this beautiful newborn 
uh, with you to share your sweet well no it won't be sweet corn that early on will it but, uh, <laughs> no <problem. laughs> uh, but uh, to enjoy yeah. the veg patch in your garden so thank you so much and have a wonderful yeah. wonderful day okay thank, thank you, you. Bye, bye bye